Well, hello there. Hello. Well, welcome to WTA Weekly. And it's my great pleasure to be sat alongside Anastasia to do a show on Talking Tennis. Genuinely, I have been excited for this day for so Yay. long. Ever since we joined the team, I've all like, and like, we had a brief interaction during the US Open women's final build up where you were like, yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I've wanted to do a show with you for so long. So I know. welcome it's, it's, it's been long in the making, but we're finally here together. WTA Weekly. It's happening, everybody. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. I mean, what I find, so we're going to get this plug out the way now, um, is that what I find interesting is that obviously you're coming on the show, given that we, we, we've just actually started a podcast together. Yes, we um, have. <laughs> which uh, you can check out. First episode came out on was it Wednesday? Wednesday, yes. Okay. Wednesday, Wednesday, yeah. So th it's fresh in your in, in your podcast feed. It's called Ground Pass, um, which um, and uh, the idea is that um, it's aimed at people who are getting into tennis, um, who want to understand maybe the context of tennis if you're going to visit it for the first time or whatever. It's also very accessible if you are a hardcore fan like the rest of us, but just be aware we are not diving deep into stats or shots yeah. or any kind of super deep analysis. Uh, but we're just having a nice chat about following the tour um, and guiding newbies in. Um, so that's what we're doing. But reason why I'm mentioning that is obviously I find it interesting that you're on the show, given that you asked me to be co-host on the basis of that I actually watched the WTA tour. So yeah. uh, no pressure, Anastasia. Um, yeah, but you know, I think it was, we just, ever since that first interaction, I was just like, oh, I, I like this guy, Nick, like he's cool. And he knows the WTA and I know the ATP. And um, we just from talking, it seemed like we did have this sort of interest in getting people into tennis or explaining tennis to a more casual fan, um, as they're called. And Ground Pass is is the name of a blog that you had a while back. So it just worked out. And, and we had a really great first episode. So the feedback has been great. I'm excited to see where it goes. And yeah. Yeah. So episode two will be out um, next week. We're going to do every two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we will probably touch a little bit on Beijing then, but maybe we'll direct people to this episode for our in-depth yeah. thoughts um, on uh, on the on the event. So I feel like now the expectation is, given uh, what happened when I had Miles on the show a couple of weeks ago, is that I have to ask this ask my guest this question, which is, how much of Beijing did you actually watch? Because I feel a like lot. you're probably mostly focused on Shanghai. <laughs> I was very much focused on Shanghai. There was that sort of overlap um, for the China Open 500 for the ATP that overlapped a little bit with, um, with Beijing, um, WTA 1000. So I watched a surprising amount 
of this of this tournament. Also, considering the time zone I'm in, I watched a considerable considerable amount of tennis <laughs> very early in the morning. Or like I did a lot too. I did my roundups where I woke up the next day, didn't look at Twitter, and was just like, okay. <laughs> I, I, got a, I have had a couple of coffee emojis from you over message. Yes, yeah, <laughs> a lot, a lot of coffee. A lot of coffee was needed for um, Beijing. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, actually, no, it's worse for you than it is for me because, like, I could possibly watch it before work, but like mm -hmm. some of it overlapped with working hours. Um, but yes, um, so okay, but it's good to know you caught some of it. So. Mm -hmm. um, and there I'm, are a lot of great storylines throughout this yes. tournament, by the way. So I'm excited to dive into this one. Which, which, you know, I kind of tweeted about ahead of the final being like, I have my biases. They're well known to viewers of the yeah. show. Um, but my I also have I, I, but I also have an interest in um, people, um, you know, doing well and breaking through. And Sam Son of a, a journey woman from the last couple of years. And it would have mm -hmm. been great to see her um get a 1000 title and get one of the biggest titles on tour but she didn't do it because Iga Swiatek is just the best <laughs> isn't she not she is the best i am you know i am not as a diehard Iga fan as you are in fact i think we're very far away from that in in our respect like you love Iga i'm like ah oh, she's okay she wins a lot of tournaments um Get up. <laughs> you know, leaving us. <laughs> really great being a part of the, the shortest been... episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> Nick was like, get out of here. <laughs> um, but, you know, what I love, I mean, I've, I've seen all the discourse and everything and oh, what sort of season is she having? It's not the best ever like last season was. And the, the great thing for me about this season and this tournament um, really has been watching people react to Iga and, you know, sort of adjust their game style or gameplay to try and beat her. But then also her growth, seeing that and being like, okay, what do I have to change? She changed a lot of stuff this tournament. She was doing all sorts of things that I haven't seen her do in in ever, really. I mean, I don't know if you have, but all the net play that she tried out this tournament was new for me. Yeah, she's she, eager and um, sort of being a bit more variety was a little bit more common before Witrowski came in. Um, and she... Uh, and basically, Wawrowski obviously sat her down and said, "We know what works. Let's make it better." And now we've gone. Okay, we've we've made your strengths as strong as they can be. Let's now add to it. And yeah. she knew that she needed to. Um, so yeah, it was great to see. Yeah, all, all these. Uh, you know, she came into each match and problem solved each individual opponent. It was great. Mm -hmm. She wasn't trying to win the same way each time. Yeah. Um, again, time zone kind of sucked. I couldn't watch every single match. Um, I, 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 much as I am a dedicated fan, I'm not the kind of person who will sacri who will jeopardize my job or, um, wake up in the middle of the night to watch my favorites. Um, but, um, I, uh, but I caught a quarterfinal against Garcia and I thought she did a very good job despite the, the, dealing with Garcia. And then that's the, the Samson of her final. She was just a complete control. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did not like Sam Son of a got a good few good shots in, but Eager was just not rattled by it whatsoever. Dealt with everything um that she got. Her serve was incredible today. Um and throughout the week. And has, like, yeah, and it has been throughout the week. Yeah, no, totally. Well, do you want to work your do you want to work from like sort of the beginning and work towards the final? Um, before before I do that, mm -hmm. um I I do want to see that, but we you you posed the question about Eager's season. Yes. And I would say I'm going to throw kind of a, another response in there, which is um, I, I was trying to think of like an equivalent sort of season that you could compare it to. Um, and actually, this is statistically a season of another very, very good player, very highly rated player, probably um, maybe a player that I would still rate as higher than Sviantec. Mm -hmm. 
very much so, uh, which is Serena Williams. Um, oh. Yeah, which Serena, obviously, one of the greatest of all time. Iga's not really racked up enough of a reputation to get anywhere near that status yet. Yeah. Um, but how would you rate, assuming you followed this at the time, how would you rate Serena Williams' 2008 season? One slam, 86% win percentage. I see what you mean. Um, very similar. Very, very similar. I guess. Didn't finish number one. Right. Although, you know, which year? 2008. 2008, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I was just reading the comments. But um, I get, I guess, I just feel it's almost different. It's different circumstances a little bit. Like, I get the whole sort of, like, chasing the leader. I mean, Ega still has a chance of ending the year number one. Um, I just feel, is it weird to say, I feel like almost Ega has it, had, had it worse in the yes, sense yeah. that... <laughs> I mean, people, I, th just the commentary I've been reading, it's like, you know, she pretty much doesn't know how to play tennis and she should um, quit while she's ahead and, mm -hmm. you know, hasn't quite, where I think with Serena, it wasn't like that at all, really. If I'm Not in 2008, because really obviously right. it's been a few years since that Serena slam of 02 into 03. Yeah. Um, she had a lot of very strong ups and downs at that period and she was coming back up she had won a slam in 07 in australia um so yeah she wasn't coming off the back of straight off the back of an incredible season like right. Iga had so yeah. yeah you're right Iga has it harder because they're immediately comparing it but i would also say the standard that serena set even then and the superstar that she was it still kind of would have put her under a similar scrutiny but not necessarily the same yeah, I guess so. I guess I guess if you you could you could parse it out that way. I just feel like because Iga had such a dominant and unprecedented really season last year, even though in my eyes she had a phenomenal season this. I mean, this season was yeah. awesome. She, she won a slam. She now has a thousand. She's won what was it five? Yeah, she has. She's won five um, tournaments so far. That's, but that's more than anyone else on the tour. Yeah. So I, I can't. I really don't understand how that can be judged as not a good season. And I think it only is based off of last year. Like, yeah. I, that's that's really it. Where with Serena, like you said, she she did have a super wavy um, record. And I don't think she had that immediate comparison. Like it was almost like she was just being compared to herself where with Iga, it was just, it was a little bit of doom and gloom, really. I was like, yes. I wish, I, I wish I could do this well. And people be, <laughs> and people say. Yeah, I, I think there's a problem that we have in all sports where if someone does something, you're expected to do it all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now I'm, I'm hoping there is video evidence of this somewhere. I'm not going to ask John to draw through the Talking Tennis archive. Um, but I, 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 th I always thought that um, Iga was going to have, what Iga's 2023 was not going to be as good as 2022. Oh. Because if you look at history, like that doesn't happen. You don't have a season of two slams and a dominant segment. Um, it's very rare for someone to do it back to back to back. It, even Serena didn't manage it, um, right. really. Um, like 0203 was the closest, but even then, 03, because Enan showed up, mm -hmm. was always like it's not seen as, as impressive as 02. Right. Um, Enan obviously had that incredible 03 season, struggled in 04, came back 07, great season, retired in 08, wasn't feeling it anymore. Um, you know, you, there's there's patterns to it. Even Graf had, I think Graf's the last person to really string two really strong back to back seasons right. together. It's it's very rare for someone to maintain that. Like, like it would have marked Eager out as a incredible player, which she which she is. But like, like topping topping mm -hmm. last season would have put her in a different stratosphere. I think you the know, only way you could have topped last season was three slams or even four. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Um, but 
you know, I think there there is that expectation in a lot of sports where you just have to be better every single year till the end of time, um, which no one has ever achieved. So people do go through these waves. Um, I, I just do feel there is something about Iga specifically that just brings out the sort of, I told you so, she's not as great as we thought. <laughs> you know, that person. <laughs> so, yes. And I, I, you know, I don't know why. Maybe she is, she is very quiet. She is very reserved and uh, introverted. So maybe that's what it is. People find it easier to sort of put a narrative on her. Um, but that's definitely, you know, who is out there talking. And those about. kind of people come out, the, uh, come out very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, like we've seen that, we saw that with Radu Kanu. We've seen that to an extent with Asaka. Actually, we I have encountered it in the last few days in replies to a tweet I put out about Coco Goff. Oh, um, right. Yep. And yep. basically, I don't know what conclusion people were coming to, but like Goff, so we are jumping around a little bit, but Sviontek beating Goff um, in the semifinals in straight sets, it was a straightforward win and like made the, took the head from head, head to head between them from 7-1 to 8-1. Mm -hmm. And my point of the tweet was, Goff didn't do a didn't play badly that match. Eager had an incredible day. Yeah. And everyone's going, nah, the head to head suggests that Goff's not that great against Fiontech. I'm like, you or could like say ever. that. <laughs> also, like, Goff had to play super well to beat Fiontech in Cincinnati. And Siga wasn't having her best day that day, but I don't think she was playing badly either. Right. Um, and if you look at every single other time they've played each other. I'm pretty sure Iga beat Goff on the way to a title. Yeah. Like yep. that's Iga in her unstoppable mode. Well, yeah. Who they no one could stop. A lot last so year. it's um, not, I think that head to head is very unflat, overly unflattering towards Goff. But yeah. the reaction is, no, we're just looking at the headline and Goff But also is I think. Not that good. It, it's a lack of perspective in a way um, because mm -hmm. Unless Goff is about to retire in the next year. <laughs> She's 19 years <laughs> <Nope>. old. <laughs> She's 19 years old. Ega's 22. They have a head-to-head -head now. Like, literally, unless you're saying one of them is about to retire, there's so much room to grow, to build on that head-to-head, -to, -head, to flip it either way, because they are just so young still and achieving such great things at such a young age. So yes, the head to head is eight one now, but who says it's not going to be eight eight in a couple of years? Or who says it's not going to be sixteen one in a couple of years? We don't know. Um, I just the the sort of knee jerk reaction to immediately sort of judge everything based on the here and now, I think, is so narrow minded, and mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I feel like it's lacking imagination, really. I mean, I could give you the most irritating example I had. Again, <laughs> on inter interactions on social media was it was a conversation. It was a few weeks back. It was a conversation around Elena Rabakina. Okay. Um, by the way, I really agree with the point that John's put in the chat. So if you're in the chat, read it. Um, but um, Elena Rabakina, and basically, I was kind of saying, "Oh, Rabakina is still a contender." Mm -hmm. um, and everything else like that. And I genuinely had someone reply with, I do not think Elena Rabakina will ever be fully foot again. And I went, okay. uh, <laughs> no, that's that, that. Okay, you are very, very focused on the here and now. And again, we're jumping around stories. Elena Rabakina definitely proved us proved that guy wrong this week because she was incredible. <laughs> Semi-final run. Was... Exactly. No, she was, she was incredible this week. But, um, when we start getting into sort of the 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 whole story of Beijing, I definitely have thoughts about Rabakina and where she's going, and um, maybe not complete. I definitely don't agree with that guy where she she'll never be fit again. But I do. She's a very fascinating um, player, um, and this for me anyway stems around all her comments about the buys, and she also has withdrawn from um, the five hundred that's happening in. Forgive my pronunciation, but Zenju, um, she just withdrew from that. Um, I don't know. 
what what her her fitness looks like or is she just being overly cautious but that's we can we can dive into that however you, you want to but i definitely have questions about about her all right yeah let's actually talk about the tournament rather than stuff around it um, yeah I think you're like <laughs> trying to get me back on track so yeah. let's talk about it yeah you want to talk about the tournament kind of eager's journey through it um i didn't watch every eager match i watched her quarterfinal against garcia i watched the second set against sam sonova and I was very happy with what I saw. I thought Iga was playing well. Um, so I can't really break it down match by match by match. Yeah. Um, I, you know, for for me, I didn't really, I think I watched, um, I watched her first match against um, Cerberus Tormes. Uh, Tormo. Yeah, Cerberus Tormo. I was like, I mixed the letters there. That was weird. <laughs> um, but I watched the first match, and just from that, I just kind of, I, you know, for me, I understood the story. You know, I was like, okay, I watched that, and then um, Lynette retired against her. No, 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 didn't was, was no Lynette, Lynette benefited from her retirement. Um, she exactly, and then um, beat her like six one six one or something. Yeah, it was something it was demolition like job. Yeah, <laughs> um, but. From those two matches, I kind of was like, oh, she's back. She's just, she's, she's dialed in. Iga does this thing where she just like locks into a tournament and she's like, well, she's going to win it, guys. Unless some, you know, mm. an asteroid hits, <laughs> you know, Iga, Iga's getting to the finals and she's probably going to win it. And I was right. Um, for me, it was sort of, this tournament was, I paid attention more to all the other players and, how they were doing. So I watched a lot of her back in those matches. Um, I watched all of Coco Goff's matches. Um, and who else did I really pay attention to at this one? I think Pagula. Pagula was another one that I was like, oh, let's see how she's doing because I hadn't really seen Goff or Pagula since the US Open. And my thing, especially with the, the women's tour with WTA is I'd like to see how they kind of back up a slam win because something happens sometimes in the, in the, you know, the slams, you have a one-time winner and then you never hear from them again. Um, but this year it's really turned itself around. You know, I was watching Marquetta von Joshua when she came into the American swing and she did, she did really great up all the way to the U S open. I think, I think she did a phenomenal job. She had issues with the balls changing and everything and a little bit of an injury. But watching Coco Goff come off of the U.S. Open, her streak continued. And she she had a little bit of a run here with um, um, with a streak. Did you manage to see any of her matches? No, I didn't. I, I th No, I caught one. Which one was it? No, it was her quarter. It was a quarterfinal against Zachary. And I thought that was a really, really good match from Goff. She controlled yeah. it. She, no, she totally she, did. I was so impressed. And it's interesting what you were saying there um, about sort of, you know, once you saw Iga beat Garcia, like, okay, she's winning this. Yeah. I didn't believe that until she beat Goff. Because ah. I I went into that match thinking, Goff is an incredible form. Iga is an incredible form. Goff's got that confidence boost of recently beating her. True, what true. What's going to happen? And but, you know, I, I just Iga is such... I always say she's a robot, but in the best sense of the word, in the sense that she can lock in so hard. And I just knew she would not go back to back losses to golf. Like I, you know, I, she did it in, in, um, during the U S swing, I just felt like she was going to sort of remedy that, that loss and, mm -hmm. and win. So, and, you know, so I did watch this match and I do think Goff was impeded a little bit. She did take a medical timeout for her shoulder. So I do think she was impeded because I think what I, what I noticed from Goff's matches from up until that um, semifinal was the, the, the sort of winning ugly mantra that she's kind of taken on hasn't left because I no. wouldn't say any of those matches she she played were just like phenomenal just straight tennis you know she won on the tennis I think it was very gritty it was very she just refused to lose 
which um, it's nice to see she's carrying that on. I think she came off really confident off the U.S. Open win and just didn't feel like she should lose to anyone, really. So I like that. So with the with the semifinal against Iga, I really did think Iga was going to win no matter what. But I do also recognize that, yes, Goff did have a shoulder thing happening. So who knows? Maybe things could have changed if she was completely 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, who knows? But yeah, uh, yeah, maybe maybe she was. But I agree with you on Goff's game, and yeah, she's a scrapper. She yeah. will. She, you you are spot on when she says she refuses to lose, um, and uh, that doesn't necessarily work against Eager unless you're having a very very good day, uh, because Eager can out hit you. Um, totally. um, if you're giving her balls to be able to hit off, I do like this question from Sean though. Mm -hmm. um that i want to actually address so um yeah get in the comments everyone who's watching you can set the agenda for this um i was gonna say this meeting but i mean this episode um <laughs> i'm not at work until tomorrow um so uh do you think uh, Iga should play um versus ostapenko the same way she played today against samsonova i mean more defensive and waiting for unfor service and less offensive trying to out hit penko like in the us open yes 100 yes that is what i thought after that ostapenko loss she she has the ability to defend um like I fully believe that she has enough top spin to just get everything back. Um, and I don't see why she couldn't play like that if she needed to. I think when Iga feels pressure, her instinct is to overhit. And that's been an aspect of her game that's been around since time of memoriam, or at least for as long like for as long as she's been a pro. Um and yeah, I, I thought the same thing after Ostapenko. She definitely can play more defensive. That is the way she can deal with the bigger hitters. Um, Sabalenka seems to be a bit different because she can compete with Sabalenka's power for some reason in comparison to like Ostapenko and Samus Oliver, who were just blasters. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of my perspective. Do you want to have a tackle at that? Yeah, and you know, I think Ostapenko just happens to be, I think, a player that can easily be frustrated, you know. So if 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 Iga plays a completely defensive game and is just getting everything back. I think Ostapenko is one of those person, one of those players that can can lose. She'll just lose the match <laughs> because she's frustrated and her power when her power isn't working. Um it, it's why I think she can't really make any of these big runs that everyone is so, you know, I think she she sort of loses the match is based on her frustration and mm -hmm. you know there's always someone in the draw that will just something will happen <laughs> i think in the us open it was playing a daytime match and she was like ah i can't do this i'm gonna lose <laughs> and you know she gets in her head a little bit because i think also i mean she's a grand slam winner i i did really expect a lot more from her but i think ostapenko is even though she's such a big hitter um, and she can hit you at the, off the court, she does tend to, to to lose matches based off of her mood. Really. Yeah, because I remember watching that French Open run in, in 17 mm -hmm. and thinking, oh my gosh, this girl is unstoppable if yep. she keeps hitting like this. And it never occurred to me that, oh, you can't hit like that sustainably. And no. I don't think it's occurred to her either, um, mm -hmm. unless it depends on the week, basically. Yeah um she'll have but, like a good like two three match run and then she'll come up against a wall and then just you know not know what to do because the ball she just keeps coming back to her and she doesn't know what to do so yeah uh, but sam's one of the different uh, player anyway um and you know uh, eager has beaten her twice already like i think the head heads very very much in eager's favor some sort yeah. of showed that she's able to challenge Iga in that Stuttgart match they had a couple of years ago, mid-streak for Iga, mm -hmm. and probably came closest of anyone to actually beating her during that period. Um, but uh, look, uh, but she's, yeah, when Samsonov is on, she's difficult to stop. And she proved that this week, like she she unstuck Rabakina. But here is here is my thing, though, because I don't think she was on this tournament. I don't think so. I, I really don't because I I watched her um match against Ostapenko and I watched her match against Samsonova, uh sorry, Rabakina. Mm -hmm. And especially with the one 
with Ravakana. I think Ravakana could have taken that. The first set went to a tie break, right? Yeah, I saw the first set and I was surprised Rabakina didn't win it. Right. And it, I think part, I, I don't know if Rabakina lost a little bit of steam going into that second set after losing, you know, the tie break. Um, Very similar to that Miami final with Kvitova. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just don't think. You're right. That's actually a really good comparison. That's a really that's a really good comparison because I really did not think Samsonova was playing well. I just don't, you know, she was serving well. I will say that she was serving really well. And Rebecca has that funky serve now that I we were talking about on Twitter that I I just find it fascinating. I think she's putting an extra beat into it, which seems yes. odd. Um so for anyone who doesn't know, who hasn't watched it, you know, she does this thing now where she'll drop, then like shift her body. I just thought it was her arm. But when you notice that she was actually moving her whole, her shoulder and her body and then tossing. And I was like, why is that an added movement? Um, but anyway, maybe it's, it's working for her now. Um, Cause she has been also having some hurt. This was actually the first time I hadn't seen her shoulder taped in a long time. So I don't know if she changed her serve based on that or or what it might be. But I really did think we're back in a played better tennis in that um, in the first set, lost the first set tie break. And then I think she ran out of steam because I really don't think Samsonova really played fantastic this this tournament. I think she but, played better in Montreal. Possibly. But then mm -hmm. that's still fantastic that she got to a 1000 final playing like yeah. that. Yeah. And that's showing that she doesn't, because like usually when she goes on these runs, she's having an incredible week. If she reaches a 1000 final, having a week that isn't her best, my word, that's going to set her up very well for 2024. And like, if you've been on the show with Jack, he's big on Sam Sonova. Oh, um, he is. Like, okay. he's, he's, yeah. So um, she's so in and out of it for me that I've never sort of latched on to her. Um, but, you know, hoping for the best. I hope she does become, uh, be is, she, is she top 20 right now, I think? Yes. Yeah, she's top 20. Um, I think she she could have, she would have got to 10 in the race, which is effectively year end 10, yeah. um, if she won the title. So she's definitely top 20. She's like mid-teens. Okay. In that yeah, sort so of really competitive. She could end up in the elite trophy. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Didn't, um, I think Petra just withdrew or just ended her season. So she's not going to be okay. um, doing the elite trophy. So maybe that leaves room for more people to come in, but yeah. Um, yeah. I hope, I hope 2024 she continues. I think, I hope she continues through 2024 because she's great to watch. Her serve is beautiful. Her serve is fantastic. So um, it would be nice to see her be more of a fixture on the tour. I think it'd be brilliant. Yeah. I would, I would, uh, I think she, uh, having her name in the mix would definitely add to it. And like, I'm one of those people who is like, yeah, the more good names, the better. Like, totally. it's not, we, we're moving. I, I am more than happy with 20 people who can win a major um, in a tournament. Um, it makes it more exciting because you're like, who's, yeah. who could it be? Which brings me to Mira and Dreva. <laughs> oh, yes. Mira and Dreva. I, I mean, you didn't watch m much of the tournament, so I'm guessing you didn't see any of her matches. Uh, Andreva, no, I, I didn't watch any of her matches. She is another one who, and I think maybe it has to do with a with youth. Um, she kind of can beat herself, you know. Um, mm -hmm. her match against Barbora was I, I, it was clinical. I was like, and and again, I thought, oh, is Barbara tired? Is she coming off? You know, like, but it was so good. You know, it was like, where did this girl come from? And then that first set against Rabakana, I was blown away. I was like, what are we seeing? You know, I was like, what are we seeing? Is is Mira Dreva gonna <laughs> gonna win Beijing? I think it was that good. Um, yeah, I I was I had that on live score, so yeah, I didn't see that. When was that? That was um what day of the week exactly. was that? Ooh, I don't know what day of the week it was. was. It, was the, it was the Wednesday, yeah. So okay. I was actually at work, like in okay. an office. 
and I was sat here going, oh my word, I ha- I, c- I can't watch this. I'm annoyed I can't watch this yeah. because she's just set up and uh, I like this was an incredible was, result. I think I even tweeted about this, but I was set to watch some match in Shanghai. I can't remember now. Oh, no, no, no. Was it either the finals of Beijing or one of the semifinals of Beijing? I think it was that. And it was supposed to be like this really big head to head. I can't remember what it was right now, but I stopped. I was like, oh no, 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 I have to turn this on. Like this is, this is bananas. This is, (laughs) this is crazy. Um, And literally as I turned it on, watched that first set and I was like, oh my gosh, Mira Andreeva is back. Where has she been since Madrid, basically? Um, You know, she's about to take out Rabakana. It was almost like Rabakana woke up and was like, I'm, I'm a top 10 player. <laughs> Hello, my name is Elena Arbachna. I'm a top 10 player. But what I realized was Mira had no answer to that. She just got so frustrated. And I really do think lost because of that. And actually, that's very similar to what happened to Ke- with against Keys at Wimbledon. Because she was yeah. up. She should, she, I don't want to say should have won that match because that's harsh, but very much could have won that match. And what happened was Keys changed it up and Mira didn't know how to deal with it. Yep. And, and I think that, it's that, the that same thing. experience. Like that's something I would expect a 16 year old to react. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think I like, I, I, I wouldn't, if, if Andreva managed to adapt to a top 10 player dining up, then, oh my word, no one can stop her. Watch out, Iga. Here comes Mira. <laughs> No, but really, it seems to be her little bit of kryptonite. Like, she did the exact same thing against Coco Gauff in, during the French Open. It's like she comes out firing, and you're like, oh, my goodness, this is an absolute blockbuster-style player. She's so good. And then she comes up against some sort of friction or aggressiveness, and she just dis- – she doesn't disappear because she actually just gets really angry and – boisterous and is throwing rackets and you know all that stuff so um i i hope she grows out of that because i really do think she could be a force if she grows mm-hmm. out of that like that first set against rabakna you she felt like she was the top 10 player she just she she came out there with so much confidence especially think i don't think they've met before i believe no i don't think so right yeah so to to just have that sort of like I can win this was really nice to see, even though she lost it in the end. I mean, she took us out of Coco in Roland Garros. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the, it was ex- it's like it, it's like clockwork for her. She comes out, everyone's saying this is the future of tennis, and then her opponent just like responds, and she you know she kind of mm-hmm. implodes. Yeah. Which you know, happened to Goff a few times in the very early days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it's, it's still place. very early, but you know, if anyone's out there looking for who's a new person to watch, I would really, be, I'm interested to see where she goes. Yeah. And, you know, she, she was the first person we mentioned on the podcast, I think. She was, she was, I think. Yes, she was. She was. Uh, she's a star so in the making. She's a star. I, <laughs> Hopefully. She's pretty close to like, uh, yeah, she's, um, she's going to be a big name for a while, I think. Yeah. Um, or definitely talked about for for a while. Um, okay, so we've jumped around a fair bit in Beijing. Um, One more person, well, two yeah. more, but in okay. the same in the same sort of sentence. Katie Bolter, I really yes. think, is so close to having a moment. She's 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 this close, guys. She's this close to having a moment. Um, her match against um, Sabalenka was Chef's Kiss. It was great. It was awesome. I, you know, she really took it to Sabalenka. Um, and I think the difference between the Sabalenka that won the match against Katie Bolter and then the Sabalenka that lost the match against Coco Goff is that she didn't get angry and frustrated and just try doing the same thing a hundred times, even though it's not working. You know, I think she really adjusted. She really, um, and she was calm. Like, I feel like that that US Open final, she was so frustrated and angry and talking to her team and talking to herself and just like a lot was happening where 
when she came up against Katie Bolter, who I think played phenomenally, like it, I think it's the best I've seen Katie play in a long time ever, really. Um, I think she she was calm. She she definitely addressed it and and was like, I'm the number one player. I'm going to win. <laughs> so um, that was good to see. Um, I liked Sabalenka's run. Um, she came up against, I think, um, a very determined Rabakina. Um, and and I just don't know where that Rabakina went when she played Sonova. I don't know. So I, I, I think something happened after losing the first set for Rabakina. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going on, on your point about Sabalenka, I think maybe the difference might have been the status of the match because it was a Grand Slam final that she was playing against Goff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You play, yeah, you play those was, matches differently. You react differently yeah, in those moments. This is true. I just thought she was... Re the moment she came up... Because if you remember with the US Open, she had such an easy first... You know, her first few matches were just like lovely and i think the last easy quote unquote easy match she had was against queen um queen wen and after that like her match against you know keys she was so angry you know talking to her team everything and it kind of just went downhill from there i don't think she handled the tournament well after that match or during that match and then afterwards um again that theme for me and where i think a player can just lose the match instead of focusing, they kind of lose it in their in their head, you know. So but yeah. which actually sets us up very well Ooh. for a conversation that needs to be had oh. about a tournament that is going to be taking place in three weeks' time. Is it three weeks? I think it's three weeks. Yes. Um yeah, one, two, three, uh maybe four weeks actually. Um Anyway, starts on the, it's going to be the week of the 30th of October. Mm -hmm. And that is the WTA finals in Cancun. Which I believe four weeks, that's enough time to build a stadium, don't you think? I, I've seen it done quicker. Um, yep. <laughs> I mean, look, let's face it. I mean, I, 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 people, I, that's I, how it happens in Miami. Yeah. At the Miami 1000. That's exactly how it happens. They put up stilts build a stadium within it's a stadium within a stadium but that's how that's how it happens guys <laughs> i i i was gonna mention something else and i'm banned from that subject on the channel so i'm not going to Ooh. um but, oh, what uh, is it? the birmingham 250 <laughs> oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk about that no no i'm not allowed to talk about that um <laughs> but i'm not entirely sure that that's all temporary structures as well yeah, like, so I pretty much every time I think people assume because of the state of the tournament, like it's all permanent has to be permanent structures. But you're right, Miami is in a football stadium. Yeah. Um and they uh, put those struck. I mean, if anyone's been to the US Open uh Miami Open, because you can actually see the sort of temporary temporariness of them when you're walking through the hallways to get to your seat and you look up and you're like oh wow it's just stilts guys <laughs> it's just, mm -hmm. just metal you can see it on tv it's fairly yeah. obvious yeah so um that was a fun little um people getting you know aggro over unnecessary things but whatever yeah, that, yeah. It, it's just not worth <laughs> I, again formula one fun i've seen formula one tracks that level of completion a month before a race chill yeah i think um, actually between the miami 1000 and the miami grand prix is less than a month and yeah. it's in the same location take that all down and put yeah it they have to take up. this tennis okay. down and, and yeah so guys everyone calm down let's let it happen and then we can comment wait for yeah. it to happen but yes let's talk about cancun <laughs> yes because cancun has got Oh my word, I am so excited for this tournament. We have good. our eight players confirmed several weeks out. It's unusual. We're not going to get a net contivate style last minute qualification. <laughs> um we are we have our top, we have our eight WTA finalists, and they are Arena Sabalenka, Iga Sviantek, Coco Goff, Elena Rabakina, Jessica Pagula, Marketa von Drusheva, On Shabur, and Carolina. Mukova. Um just to kind of just just to kind of hype this up a little bit more. This is why I'm excited for it. You have four major champions, 
Sabalenka has won Australia and Madrid. Sviantec has won Roland Garros and Beijing. Rebecca has won Indian Wells and Rome. Goff won Cincinnati and New York. You've got Von Drusheva who won Wimbledon. You've got um, Pagula, who is the obviously the consistent runner throughout the season, but also won in Montreal. And then yep. you've got two Grand Slam finalists. All the Grand Slam finalists are going to be there. Yeah. Um, that's that's how it should be, really. That's, and, and it's brilliant. Like it's fine. It's an it's an eight that all had great seasons. Everyone has a storyline that took them through. Um, and guys, even Marquetta, because she has her little, you know, she was in a cast, you know, a year mm -hmm. ago. And here she is, a Wimbledon champion. So I think everyone has their story. I think it's, they're all exciting matchups too. Like all of them are just like, ooh, <laughs> they're all exciting matchups. And, and we're also going to get a fight for who's going to be year in number one. Yes, and that's the other thing I'm excited about. <laughs> I mean, come on. What else do you want from a year-end final? All of those things. And we get, like, competition of who's going to be year-end number one because I can't remember now. Is it 300 points that separate or, like, 400 or something? It's 700. Oh, 700 points that separate them yeah, right yeah. now? Yeah. Good person okay. to follow on these Still. kind of things is um, J.I. on Twitter. Yeah. Um, he he does a lot of breakdowns of things and actually he's got a tweet that basically breaks down all the scenarios for who could be world number one at the end of the tournament, how many points they need to get, like where they would go. And he said in 10% of those scenarios, Sviantec overtakes Sabalenka. Um, okay. And he's a Sviantec fan, by the way. He's he's one of the eager fan. Um, how far away is Coco in his track? Uh, um, uh, well, Coco's not in... He just did Sabalenka and Sviantec. Oh, he only just did those two. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Coco... It's a max of 1,500 points. Oh, she's that far away? Okay. Yeah, no, so it's, it's a 1,500 point max yield from the event. Mm -hmm. And Coco is... What yeah, is looking at this now, about? she's um, 2,000... Ah, uh, okay. Five, so yeah, 2,500 yeah. behind. So yeah, she can't do it. Yeah, it's, she can't do it. There we go. We've got the chart. Um, but yeah, um, so, um, wow, 84% of the people think, guys, Sabalenka though, come on. She has momentum. So here's the thing, the way the WTA finals points works is very different to the ATP finals, where if you lose a match, like at the ATP finals, if you lose a match, you don't get any points. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. At the WTA finals, if you lose a match, you still get 125 ranking uh -huh. points. Ah, Oh. So you are guaranteed a minimum of um, 700, no, sorry, 350 for two match losses plus another 125 is 475 points minimum from the tournament. Okay. So, I mean, Ego would have to win at least some of those. She couldn't just lose all her matches. And no. So, yeah. So it's 475 points. Um, minimum. So then, yeah. Uh, so basically, if Iga, so let's say Sabalenka lost all of her round robin matches, um, she still gets 475. Iga would get 1,500 if she goes unbeaten. Yeah. Um, which would be just about 1,000 points, uh, 1,025 points more, which is obviously enough. Um, I think if Sabalenka lost all of her round robin matches, Iga needs to get to the final to overtake her. And be unbeaten. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, um, I'm sure we will get on to sort of like the tournaments coming up. But just to say, Iga uh, and Arena, they're not playing anything else till the no. finals, right? They're, they're heading straight there. I think everyone's heading, not going to bother but playing anything. Like Coco and Elena and Karolina Mukova literally just pulled out of the WTA 500 that is happening this week in Jiangsu. Yeah, gotcha. So the only people that would be playing that, I think Ons is still in it. Um, uh, is Ons? Uh, yeah, Ons is still in it, yeah. So Ons is still going. Obviously, Sakari is the first alternate for the WTA finals. I thought Pagula was playing some sort of 250 somewhere too. I'm checking the others. So Hong Kong top seed is Azarenka. And then okay. we've got Seoul. Yeah, Pagula's playing Seoul. Okay. okay. Which is 250. Um She's the oh, top what? seed. Ostapenko is the second seed. Um, actually, the eighth seed is Katie Bolsa. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, I mean, is it too late to withdraw from those? Because the draws are out, right? Uh, that, it's not too late, but obviously it doesn't look, it doesn't look great if yeah. you do. Yeah, okay. Because even with Coco, even with the three that withdrew from Zhenzhou, um, I mean, they basically just gave walkovers to mm -hmm. people in the second round already. Whoever um, I'm just having a look at the entry lists. Um, Oms is planning on playing a tour at 2.50 in Tunisia two weeks before the finals. She's just been given a wild card for it, as has Venus Williams. Wow. Yeah. See, and, and, I, and I don't know when you want to talk about this, but I really would like to discuss or at least hear what you think about mm -hmm. Ego withdrawing from the Billie Jean King Cup and how close these tournaments are to the finals. And it's fine. You know, it's sort of like whatever, however you feel that your body can take this. Because if Ons is playing, so Ons is playing in China, this 500 mm -hmm. goes straight from this. So it's a two week it'll be Tunisia in two weeks after that. So she'll she'll if she's like say she wins that five hundred, she then has a week to get to Tunisia. A week off to get to Tunisia, play, play that, that for a week, then a week off, then week, the finals. Then the finals. So that's that's doable. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. I mean, I you and I couldn't do it, but no, we're not. I mean, but could we win a game though? <laughs> We no. <laughs> I struggled to win a game in my regular tennis leagues. I have to say that was my favorite stat thing that ever came up when it was like US players think they could win. I mean, it was so good. I was like, only us, only us would think this. But yes, anyway. I think there's some Brit. I think there are Brits who think that they just won't say it. They just won't in say a it. public in in a public poll. They'll say it in a private conversation. Um, we're we're all out here. We're like pickleball. We got that. Tennis. It's the same, right? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay. So WT finals. Um, and uh, yeah, there's so many different uh, scenarios. Obviously, we don't know what the groups are. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, I, I guess then it's coming down to, yeah, I can see why the poll says Iga Swiatek is overtaking it because right now she has the momentum. She does. She does. I mean, that's kind of why I asked if either of them were playing anything up until um, the finals. I think it gives maximum rest. You can have time to work out whatever kinks, whatever you need to do. You pretty much have a month off to dial things in, um, which can work great for other people. Like it, for, I mean, it can work differently for both of them. I just think that works the best for Iga. Iga needs that time to sort of hone in and focus in. And then she just comes out a beast at the end of that month. Like I can't see how she doesn't come out of a month of rest, just ready to like, you know, flame and in many, just flame. in many ways, actually she's, she might be trying to write wrong. Cause I think that 2022 WTA finals was a missed opportunity for her as mm -hmm. much as she had missed opportunities in 2022. Um, but I'm I feel sure like she, in she her checked list of out goals. a little bit when she lost yeah. to Sabalenka in that semi. Mm -hmm. um, that was my understanding. She just had one bad game, and that was it. She was gone for the rest of the match. She yeah. wasn't. She wasn't coming back. And Sabalenka played well. They always have a battle. Um, and actually, I've just done the quick math. And if they played each other in the final, Sabalenka's confirmed as number one. It doesn't matter. Right. Uh, it Not wouldn't really. be a winner takes all type scenario, which is a shame because I would be up for that, but. That would be nice. That would be kind um, of like US Open men's edition 2022. But anyway, um, I, I do think the time off, the rest benefits Iga more. I think she's planning, you know, I think, you know, players, they all have a checklist of what would we like to do in this season? I think part of her, her list was winning the WTA finals, mm -hmm. you know? And I think pulling out of Billie Jean Cup Billie Jean King Cup again um, is yeah. I, is, I, I, is, I yeah. I think her, I think it's a, it was a ridiculous expectation to expect someone to play in Mexico on a Sunday and play in Europe on a 
Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, like that's an extreme example. I don't think they would have asked Sega to do that, but um, yeah, I think she made the right decision. Yeah. Um, I mean, this was the whole reason why on the men's side, because of the Davis cup, it kind of pushed back China a bit. And that's why we had this weird thing where um, tournaments were starting on a Wednesday and ending on a Wednesday and it, it confused everybody. Um, it's finally getting back um, to how it usually is. But I, I mean, I don't blame her. It, it, I think people are, which is why, unlike most people, I'm a huge, I was a huge fan of the performance buys because I thought you have to consider air travel and what it does to some people. Not everyone gets jet lag or um, is totally, you know, ruined for, for a day, but it, it does take a lot to travel across the ocean and then play the next day. I think that is so, so demanding on, on, on an athlete's body to be able to do that. So, I mean, I'm a fan of performance buys. I know that's a totally different topic, but I really wasn't surprised by her. We saw what it did to Iga in just a trip to, across Australia at right at the beginning of the year. Yep. Exactly. Um, yeah. Got so, through her, her group in the United Cup, no problem. Switches cities. She's not had the best trip. Pagula was much more acclimatized to the conditions. Pagula had the advantage in that match. Yeah. Um, so we when we saw what happened there. Like Eager was just not herself. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's it's a reasonable decision. I, I yeah. It's, and I think I would be surprised if anyone playing the WTA finals plays for the Jean King Cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's but a, that's hey, a shame we make, yeah. Yeah, but we can make the most of those WTA finals because they said, you know, although Eager versus Arena will be the biggest story, there are others. We we want to see, okay, what happens to Coco Goff when you throw her in the middle of things? I actually think Elena Rabakina might win it because she's got a great record against pretty much everyone else in that tournament yeah yeah um, and it's actually a uh, really good storyline that i didn't think of how does coco goff now in this top eight how does she you know which was top eight last year yeah no i know i know but it, it was a different field last year <laughs> it was a different field last year guys <laughs> yeah um there seems to be some sort of echo do you hear that or is it just me? It's probably just you. Uh, it might just be you. Is that? Okay. No, it's better now. It's fine. It was it was there for a second and then left. But um, one person I am going to be looking out for is Ons Jabor. I mm-hmm. actually didn't realize she was playing this China 500 and a Tunisia event and then going to the WTA finals because... I just think she's not, she's definitely with her win um, in Asia is, I think her mood has improved and she's, she's feeling, she looks better at least, but coming off of Wimbledon, she has been one to watch because it's been dismal. You know, I think I watched her a few times at the U S open and it was one of the most I, painful events because Ons is a player who takes you on the journey if you can, if you know what I mean, like she takes yeah. you there. She's like, you are with me. Let's go together. Um, and it was pretty brutal. So watching her win in Asia was great, but I'm still sort of like iffy on her form and, you know, not really knowing where she is. I did read a comment though. I did read a comment recently, which is why, you know, it's like, you never know what players are going through, but it was something about how she didn't even think she was going to be able to play this season due to some sort of injury or something like that. So that was interesting to, to hear based on how she actually ended up doing. Remember Stuttgart? Ooh, that was, that was also very, very painful mm. to watch, you know? So she's, she's one that I'm going to be really watching during these finals to see. And actually I'll be going to be watching Karen Mukova for similar reasons. Ooh, uh, yes. Yeah. Because we know how injury prone she is. She's not played since the U S open. Yeah. But we know how good she is. Like, she's beaten Sabalenka twice. She came damn close to beating Iga in a Roland Garros final. Yeah. Um, like, uh, she's she's uh, she, she's reached the, the, the Cincinnati final. Uh, you know, she's come close. And there's that big title. Everyone's waiting for her to win. And everyone would love her to win. Um, and we, we I'm confident in her. 
Um, yeah, she's the only one in the group. I mean, she's been a finalist, obviously. Um, but yeah, she's the only one in the group who hasn't won who a hasn't 1, won anything. Level. Yeah, I mean, she's won a two fifty. Has she? Did she? So she she has won a tournament this year. No, not this year. Yeah, yeah. So I think she's the only. Yeah, she's the only one who hasn't won a tournament this year. She has been a re, on, in some really great finals. Um, so yeah, you're right. She is also another one to watch. It's not unheard of. I think 2017, Caroline Wozniacki won the WTA finals, having literally won her first title of the year like a couple of weeks before. Yeah. Oh no. Again, definitely not unheard of. I'm sure there's a list of people like that. Um, but just. But so I, I can't think of anyone who's like that was their only title of the year. Um, yeah. Maybe Brad Vansko in 2015, but I think maybe she would have won a title. That I'd, I'd have to do some digging. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's unlikely. It would be, mm, but then it'd be the WTA. And that's why we love the WTA. And that's why we love it. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. So we're hyped. I know I will do a much bigger deep dive into Cancun um, when it all comes around at the end of the month. Um We'll and um, we'll have covered the elite trophy as well, which is not a tournament that's happened since before COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's just so let's quickly dive into before we wrap up the yeah. three tournaments, um, uh, that are happening this week. Though, so there's a two, there's a WTA 500 in uh, Zhengzhou, which we've mentioned, there is a WTA 250 taking place in Hong Kong, and there's a WTA 250 taking place in Seoul. Um, so apologies if I have butchered those names. Um, I am a entitled Englishman um, who does not think about these things before reading them. And uh, uh, so let's start with let's start with uh, Zhengzhou. So obviously the field's okay. now a little depleted because we've lost Goff, Rabakina, and Mukova. Um, and after the draw was made as well, so they've had to shift some things around now. Um, so instead of one and two being the top of the draw, it's now seven and six who are getting buys. Um, so your top seeds are Maria Sakkari, Ons Jabeur, Caroline Garcia, Barbora Krajikova as your top four. And then Dara Kasatkina, Veronica Kudamatova, Donna Vekic and Ludmila Savsonova is coming, is going to be seeded. Oh, Interestingly, she's, yeah, she's in this tournament. She's not got a buy. Uh, let's see if she plays her first rounds against Tatiana Maria. Um, yeah, this is one of those 500s mm -hmm. where the top seeds aren't there, but it's still a pretty good draw. Like yeah. there's still there's some good names in there. Maybe one of the weakest 500 fields of the year, if not the weakest that I've seen. Um, but still pretty good. Like you've got first rounds. I'm looking at Petra Martic versus Magdalenette. That's going to be good. Um, Lacey Serenko against Diana Schneider. That's going to be an interesting one. Um, kocharetto has got Kasat Kina in round one. Kudamatova's playing Zvona Reva in round one. Um, Samsonova's playing Maria. So, um, Zhu versus Siegmund, friend of the show, um, both. Um, so, uh, there's still some good matches worth watching in there, but um, I think the, the this 500 is definitely going to be about the players who are trying to get something from the season before it finishes. Before it finishes, which I would like to call out Derek as Akina because I think she's she she's due to do something this season. You mm -hmm. know, I don't think she's had the best of seasons. Um, no, still and, she's still going to finish top 20 though. Yeah, but this might be her chance to to sort of wring something out of it um mm -hmm. maybe maybe get to a semi-final you know final situation I mean, she um, needs to show she needs to show a trophy on her vlog at some point at some point we've got to see it guys <laughs> um she does have a great blog if no one's watching i love that blog go go look for it 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 is so great because it's what i want the tours to actually do more of because watching their behind the scenes of tournaments has been so enlightening, you know, learning. I didn't know there was a player app that you could use to pay for things and do things. And it's actually been really great. If you want to, yeah. if you love behind the scenes of tournaments, things like that, you have to watch her blog because it's, it's really great. You find out a lot. Yeah. And you've got a sense of her, like, she's definitely got a very, 
dry sense of humor yeah <laughs> um which actually must be it must be a russian thing because medvedev is si- like his similar more, similar yeah similar like he leans more heavily into the sarcasm but daria's definitely got a sarcastic side as well yeah yeah uh medi you never know what what he's are you being serious right now <laughs> um someone else i'm looking at in that draw other than um queen wen who you know is the draw that you have, I think, is sort of updated from what I have. But is she still playing Vekic in the first round? No, it's got moved around. So I've got, okay, so around, I've got okay. it on Wikipedia at the minute. Um, the source, which is obviously the most accurate source I could find. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could try the, the TNS, WTA website, unfortunately, still has the old draw. Because that's what yeah, I'm the, 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 the This is where the WTA website lacks behind the ATP in so many ways. It's frustrating. Yeah. Anyway. Um, no, she's playing a qualifier in round one. Um, okay. Zhang Wen is playing um, and a Ukrainian qualifier named um, Katerina Volodko. Okay, that is good only because those are two players who I want to see if they can pull something out also by the end of the year because Quinn Wen has been in good form. You know, she won the gold medal at the Asian Games. Mm -hmm. Um, She's had this issue with her coach situation. So I'm just rooting for her in general. I'm like, she should be able to do something at home. Um, Other, I mean, she just obviously won the gold medal at the Asian Games, but it would be lovely if she could get a title in China. Um, I think that'd be great for her. And then also someone with Donna Vekic, because remember the beginning of the year, where I feel like everyone was like, Donna Vekic, she's going to be something. We were like right up until Wimbledon. <laughs> yeah, it was like, she's going to be something. And when I tell you that plane just crashed, I don't, I, you know, I don't I mean, know. I was, I was on with, uh, like, uh, I, at the post Wimbledon show was with Pam Shriver, who's Donna's coach. Oh. And a big chunk, of, like, I'd say 10% of that show was talking about Donna and yeah. how I was like rooting for her and like Pam was like going all in and making sure we were mentioning Donna. Uh, so to what see her kind of crash you? after that, I, I would crash is a harsh word, but no, she's still got opportunity to write her season. Exactly. So, uh, you know, she's, she's someone who um, I, I'm looking for her to do something before the end of the season. It's so she's got almost, Hibino in round one now. Yeah. It's almost a little bit soccer esque you know, I think people were just, you know, latched onto Zachary's story a little bit and she was able to pull up Guadalajara and, you know, I think kind of resurrect the season, really. I'm hoping Donna Vekic can do something like that before the end of the season. I'm just going to have a quick look at the race because obviously um, we th- there's obviously this other tournament, the WTA, too, which I quite like, the, the Elite Trophy, um, mm-hmm. which is for the... 12 player, the best 12 players who didn't make the WTA finals, make the WTA finals. Um, which is interesting because obviously the way it works is at the top, it's like 11 in the race. So numbers nine to 19 plus either number 20 in the race or a wild card um, of some description. So I would, I would, I think that wild card would probably go to Zhang Chin Wen because oh, it's in China. Would, yeah. And she's yeah. very close. She's, yeah. Um, so I think John is probably going to end up. I'm just having a look. Donna, Donna could make it. It's tough. She's 300 points, just under 300 points behind Garcia, who's in that 19th spot. Uh, um, so I think they're both going to be going hard because Garcia is in this too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's actually, cool. yeah. So actually, in there are qualifiers for the Elite Trophy um, who are likely to be there. Sakari's playing, and no, Sakari's actually. Yeah, Saka is playing. Um, Samsonova is playing. Krajikova, Kudamatova, Kasatkina, Garcia is like the people who are already in that bracket. And then the people chasing that bracket who are in the draw um, are Jean Chin Wen, Magda Lynette, and Donna Vekic, who are just outside of it. Um, mm. Also, maybe trying to get into it are um, Alexandrova, who's in Seoul, and Azarenka, who's in Hong Kong. Okay. Um, I'm just having a look. Yeah, those are the names to be looking out for for elite trophy qualifications. No point going further down the list. Yeah. Okay. You know, so yeah, those are, I mean, in in that 500, that's who I'm looking at to, I also just saw Veronica Kunatover's name, who every time I see her name, I'm like, 
well, she could win. <laughs> well, you, you kind of have, I, I think she could, like, in a, in a draw like this, she definitely could. Like, she's she good could. enough. Mm -hmm. She's one of those yeah. pickles that you see and you're like, oh, she could she, she can win or she could be out in the first round. Who knows? Uh, and and maybe a similar name is um, Krajikova. Yes, and, uh, as well, especially post um, post Guadalajara. Yeah, because well, she didn't win Guadalajara. She, she yeah, didn't no, she Guadalajara. didn't. She won. Which one, which one did she? She oh, won no, San Diego. Um, San Diego, San Diego. I was like. She was in one of those. Or it was San Diego. All I remember really is her. You weren't watching uh, Vanch's updates from it. Anyway, so um, uh, I, um, so yeah, so she hasn't really played. Then she went to Beijing and lost to Andreeva in round one. Yeah. Then don't know if she played another Asian tournament before that. Um, I so she yeah. Did, but Kajika I, is now back almost where she start, She was before mm -hmm. San Diego. Yeah. In a way, it's like, oh, oh, no. That didn't kick off how we <laughs> thought it would kick off. Which is a shame because I like Barbie. Yeah. Which was the one before? Was that? It was in somewhere in. Was it Do? No. Which one did she win earlier this year? Oh, yeah. She won uh, Dubai. Dubai 1000. Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. So she just picks them. Beginning of the season, almost the end. All the yeah. Chris Eagle is one of those players where this is. Uh, She's a player who, like, yeah, she'll have a great week and she'll be unstoppable. And yeah. that, that levels in her. Like, the way she beat the top three in the world to win Dubai was awesome. Yeah. It's top uh, four. It's top four, Nick, okay? And she's the fourth. Remember oh. that? <laughs> remember that, though? I do remember that. But she had a reasonable claim to it. No, she did. At the time, she totally did. It just, it's one of those things. It's almost like the Corda at Queens being like, I'm one of the top for Wimbledon. And then you're like, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. But, yeah. They, they go, players are just as guilty as us fans of looking yes, at the or here and now, circling Tennis back players, to what we were talking about, <laughs> about an hour ago. <laughs> Tennis players are just like us. Uh, okay, so we did we did Zenju. What's the other one? Um, so there's two more, Hong Kong. Okay, um, right. Well, the helps. top two seeds in Hong Kong are Azarenka and Haddad Meyer. Or Haddad Meyer. Um, you've also got Elise Mertens, um, Wang Jin Yu, who's having a good Asian swing. Um, or actually had, had a solid year, actually. Blinkova, Trevor Sam, um, Peyton Stearns, and Vavara Gracheva. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. These are, this is great. I just this see the draw. This the first two matches in the draw, and I'm like, whoa. Azarenka Fernandez, yes, okay. please. Like two of my favorite players. I I am big Layla Stan. Like uh, me too. Like huge. Like, her, it, I know it's, it's debatable it, and people debate it, mm -hmm. but her run for that US Open 2022. Mm -hmm. She did it. Yeah. And I get she, it, everyone does the Emma thing, but I think Layla had. No, I'm the same. I'm so gutted that it had to be Emma she played in that final. Yeah. Because that was, completely overtook that incredible run. Yeah. yeah. Th and uh, but and actually, I think if I stylistically, I prefer watching Layla. I like mm -hmm. watching both um, Layla and Emma. But um, her four AM start in John's time, which is which is three AM mine. 4 a.m. So, oh no, I can't do. Wait, wait, what time in your time? 3 a.m. 3 a.m. my time. No, I'm pretty sure. No, because I'm. It's 10 p.m. Eastern oh, time. 10 p.m. Eastern is. I'm watching that. That's that's great. Thank, thank I, you. I, well, let me know how it, how it is because I can't. But yeah, so in case you don't realize, like, we, we know where Eager is for me, but Layla's just below. That's nice. I, I I mean I'm I'm a so huge. The two players, I will drop everything to watch. I I every time I watch Layla, I'm just I'm rooting for her so much because mm. she just puts. But this draw, I, I'm also just looking at this draw. And this is the first time I've seen it. Oh my word! And Draver Yastremska, Fravitova Stearns. Live draw reactions, people. You didn't know we did them, <laughs> but we do them now. Um, <laughs> um and Wong 
Siniakova, and that's one Jiu who's doing well, and um, Sastovich had admire. That's oh, <sighs> okay. Yeah, that so there's a few thinking. more exciting for the first round. I mean, see how the rest of the draw plays out. Yeah. Um, no, but the, the some they're really, really great first round matches here. Um, so two really great draws before before the I'm I'm loving this. Like who do you who are you liking here to see what they can do? I mean, for me, just heart-wise, it would be lovely to see Layla make a run. She hasn't mm. really done so all year ish am i not really no she's not i don't think really. she's won a title this year yeah she's, she's, really she's kind of been... running into tough players yeah I, I think it hasn't really well no well anyway she hasn't really done one it'd be nice to see her do it and then beatrice had admire i also have a soft spot for her um i've seen you her like lefties wide. don't you Le yeah lefty grinders <laughs> so let's see how she does i haven't seen her play I haven't watched any matches that she's played since the U.S. Open, so it'd be it'd be interesting to see, um, to to watch her, um, and you know now I'm a freaking now I'm a Mira Andreva stan, so watching for her. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I'm looking at this draw, going maybe Mira might win this one. Look, Mira, who beat Rabakina in the first set, would win this tournament. She just mm. has to put it all together. She just has to, you know, grow up. Maybe one more year. This is her first year on tour. Yeah. This is her. Yeah. So you know, I think she she has potential, and um, it'll be great to see where she goes. And then the last tournament that you before mentioned, we do that, before oh, we yeah. go to the last tournament, um, Peter, um, friend of the show or Thai guy fifteen, actually mm -hmm. put in the chat, which John has responded to, but I wanted to um, I wanted to talk. I see what your thoughts are. What do you think about Linda Fravitova? And also, he loves you. Oh, hi. <laughs> this what is Peter, Peter from uh, Murray Musings, I believe. Um, I don't have thoughts, really. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think? Um, she's not I think you know. it's she's very hard to gauge because she's about 17, 18 now. Um, won a tournament last year, 250. Mm -hmm. um, I heard of her sister first, um, oh. Brenda, who went on a is is tearing up the ITF tour, aged 15, 16. Um, like, but Linda, um, so there's Linda and Brenda, um, but Linda is the older sister, and she's got a 250. She's reached the fourth round of Indian Wells in her career, and she, yeah, she's a she's a solid baseliner. She can alternate between being a pusher and being a power hitter. And you don't know which day she's going to get. Okay. Um, and, and who does she have? Is she? She's in. Um. She's in Hong Kong. Kong. Who does she? Where is she? I don't see her. She is near the top of the draw. So she's got Stearns in round one. Ooh. I would say if you're interested is in she's seeing. She's a pusher. She no, She flips. Okay. You don't know which day Ooh. she's going to be. Interesting. Like, she, she 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 can flip between the two, so um, it depends on which. That could be a really interesting matchup with Stearns. That could be really honestly. That that's a, if you're interested in the next generation of WTA tour. That's a match to keep an eye on. That's yeah, yeah. Um, those are those are the young guns. I, I think Linda's someone who has a lot of potential. I don't want to really put a label on where she's going to be. It's another freaking middle of the morning. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> This, this is watching tennis in Asia and Australia. This I just don't jam. watch tennis because <laughs> I like because I like my sanity. Um, yes. But um, like watch tennis at this time of the uh, in this time zone. Um, I mean, Cancun's also going to mess me up because it's also going to be middle of the night. Um, I'm I'm happy for Can. I'm like, oh thank goodness, Cancun won. Although yeah. I love I love tennis in Europe because I just wake up early. And yeah. I watch the matches, you know, I wake up by, I'm up by seven anyway, watch the matches. And then that's my day. Then I can move on with my day because by 11, they're all done. And, you know, I can carry on. So I actually really like tennis in Europe. 
um, so I can get the, you know, my, my morning tennis. That's, that's, that's probably what you're used to in the, in the States as well. Right. Last tournament, because we've been going on for a while. Um, Seoul in Korea. So your top seeds, Jessica Pagula, Yelena Ostapenko, Katerina Alexandrova, Marie Bushkova, Sophia Kennan, Alicia Parks, Arantha Roos, and Katie Bolter. Um, looking at the draw, Pagula's got, there's no buys. Pagula's got a first round match against uh, Renchkova. Podoroska's got the first round against Kruger. Could be interesting. Um, the other Kudamatova, Polina, has got Parks in round one. Bolter versus Yuvan could be a battle. Um, that's probably the first round match that stands out to me from this list. Uh, but it's probably going to, if, if the top seeds stay in the draw, it's going to come alive nearer the end. Do you think if Bolter gets through that, though, she's looking at a quarterfinals? Like, look at it. Yeah, I, I think she'd be a favorite against um, Yuan, depends because Yuan could be challenging. Um, yeah. But I overrated her in one tournament and I re regretted it because I back, I think I backed her to win an Asian title and then she lost first round, oh. um, <laughs> which happened. That's not her yeah. fault. It's, it's, my, it's like, uh, you know, tennis is not a game for my pleasure. So, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, her doing um quarterfinals yeah she's got a really good opportunity for quarters and then maybe even semis actually because that really depends on how Bushkova's doing i was gonna say because i was like oh like she could be but i think she could beat Bushkova. same i mean it would be nice to get a brit you know back in sort of there's just no brits and i mean she's top 100 now but yeah. 50 no... nearly. Oh, is she top 50? She broke top 50 briefly. Oh. Yeah. It would be nice to see someone consistent in that in that range. And she she this year has kind of poked her head out to be like, it's gonna be me. Um yeah, she's 59 in the race. Okay, not bad. So, so very competitive. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, she could do it. Um, also, I mean. I think it's easy to just say this is Jessica Pagula's tournament to lose, you know, um, her being the top seed, but she's in good form too. So, I, I, you could say that. Well, she didn't. She didn't have a great Beijing, did she? Who did she, Who did she lose, lose to? Beijing? She lost to. Oh, she lost to Ostapenko, which again, okay, that's a bad loss because. No. But Ostapenko's in this draw. Like, you can get a Pagula Ostapenko final. Ooh, that'd be nice. That's, that would also be nice. Although, having said that, I am looking at this draw and I'm looking at this potential Kenin Ostapenko quarterfinal. I'd be up for that. Same. Kenin is someone who I want to latch on to. And she gives me hope sometimes. She gives me slivers. And then, like, she did, um, was it San Diego? that she really had a good run. But also I don't know what she's, what her injury status is really because her thigh has been strapped, strapped, mm. you know, like worse than Alcaraz. Like, so I don't know. Um, I don't know where she is. Are you about to play Vanished to San Diego open, John? Did no. I, did I say San Diego three times? And that's what happened. <laughs> We've said it too many times. I mean, Van Vanch had entered the chat, by the way. Ah, that's why. Hey, baby. <laughs> um, there we go. Had, like, literally. Like, I, I don't think those words have never been more literally true in their life. But um, there we so, go. Yeah, she, she could be someone to definitely um, look at um, and see how far she goes. Has she played since San Diego? Uh, I think mark? she has actually, yeah. Sophia Kennan, yeah. She, she obviously she, Guadalajara. She played. Okay. Um, she got to the semi-finals and lost to Dol Dolhide. Um, Who was? Where is she? Where is where is Dolhide? We, we, we'll we'll, we'll talk about her in a minute. Okay. Uh, I'll check. Um, so, uh, by the way, Kennan then lost to um, Sabalenka in round one of Beijing. That was just a tough draw. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. I, she was crushed, by the way. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. Dolhide. Uh, 
She's just broken top 100 because of that result. Um, yeah. I don't know where she is. Um, I don't think she, she's in she's Asia. She's proper higher, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think she's in Asia. She probably, you know, there are a few players like that. Like I think um, Taylor Townsend didn't go to Asia. Um, so I just think there are a few players that just stayed in the States and are doing like challengers and things like that. So she's probably on that swing, but she was a nice sort of revelation as well in Guadalajara because I just loved the way she played too. So hopefully she has a, a fruitful 2024. I love that. Um, okay. Wow. We've, we've what got else can you we covered. talk about? <laughs> I mean, we, we, like, I'd love that. I'd love that. So to keep chat. Look, I've always worked for ch chatting tennis with you, and that's the danger of like starting a podcast. I know. With you. you have to. By the way, how you edited an hour long conversation to forty five minutes, um, like well done. But you know, here on WTA Weekly, we're a little more um, go with the flow, and like everything we say goes out um, <laughs> is life. Um, uh, and but it's been nice well, just I, being here and having a little bit of unstructured tennis chat that's kind of relevant to what just happened. Yeah, I think that's basically the summary of the episode. Um, usually, um, uh, yeah, yeah, John, we, we also, yeah, this is not going to get edited for the podcast <laughs> form, this is going out as is. As um, is. <laughs> Live uh, with it. Um, so if you are listening on the podcast form, um, hello, thank you for sticking with us um please follow us on we podcast have gone on a journey. please like and subscribe if you haven't already if you're following us on youtube follow us on twitch even like give us a sub on twitch um if you are here on there um but yeah this has been a lot of fun um i think i can safely say the show has been a dream come true and lived up to expectations yes we did it Oh, whoa. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't know how you did that, but well done. <laughs> For everyone listening and not watching, I just had some fireworks explode behind me because I think it was the two thumbs up. So the new oh. iOS thing, it does things. Like, I think it'll do something if I do that. Yeah, like that. Um, right. I think it does this too. Okay. Great. You're I giving think... the producer ideas now. This is going to oh, be no. all over the place. <laughs> so sorry, John. <laughs> right. But wasn't it perfectly timed though? That was yeah. the most perfectly timed fireworks display ever. I feel like that's something maybe we should we should go out on. We can't we can't top this moment. We've no, we've we can't. Got the fireworks off. Um, so it. let's just roll with it. And uh, yeah, we're going to go out with a bang, people. So thank you, Anastasia, for coming on and talking and um, talking tennis with me on WTA Weekly. Um, keep an eye on the channel for more content on its way as we start to make our way through the end of the tennis season. And I will be back next week, probably on Sunday, to wrap up everything that's happened in Asia this um, as the tour leaves. So thanks so much, Anastasia. Take Thank care, you. everyone. Keep talking tennis. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.